Going back to this example, x is greater than 5. We already said there's an infinite number of solutions. There's no way that we can list them, so um, here's one way that we can uh, go about expressing our solution set. One of those ways is to use a number line. Now some people would have you put 0 and then do the tick marks for the numbers, but we don't need to do that. For this particular example here, the only number that I care about is 5. That's, that's it. That's the number I care about. I don't care about 4, 6, or anything else. I care about um, 5. That's my main number. Now notice that this said x is greater than but not equal to 5. Um, the way we would express that on a number line is to put an open circle. Okay, Having an open circle here, having an open circle will denote that we are starting as close to 5 as we can be without actually including 5. And then since this inequality says greater than, the numbers that are greater than 5 would be those obviously out here to the right. That's where the numbers get larger because there's a natural ordering to the number line. You know if you go out to the right, you would have numbers like 6 and so on. Out to the left, you'd have 4, 3, 2, 1, and all those fantastic numbers that are less than 5. So in this example, I'm really concerned with those values that are greater than 5. So what we have here in terms of uh, expressing our solution set is graphing. This is our first discussion about graphing. This is how you would graph your solution set, or at least one of the ways. Uh, there's another way that the book talks about doing it, and it's a combination of the way I do the graphing and interval notation. Now, interval notation is really the preferred way of expressing your solutions. You notice that greater than 5 has no bound. You can keep getting as large as you want to, but you're never going to run out of numbers. We use this symbol right here, called infinity, to represent the unboundedness of the real numbers. There's basically there's no largest number. Now if that's the case, we could say that the solutions go from 5 to infinity. Now the other part of the notation that we would use would be parentheses for this. Okay. Every once in a while you will use a bracket and that's when you are including that's when you are including um, the endpoint. Uh, since we're not including the 5, we're just getting as close to it as we want to, we're going to use parentheses. So an open circle on the graph means parentheses in the interval notation. And anytime you have infinity, infinity will always have parentheses. So this is what your solution would look like when you use interval notation. And in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, more examples of using interval notation since that's what we use uh, most often. The other method we have is what we call set builder notation. And set builder notation would use these little curly brackets right here. And basically you would say this. It's a set, so you're saying the set of all x, we use this vertical line to mean the phrase such that, okay, so this guy right here means the phrase such that. Basically what you're doing is that you're giving the conditions for your values of x. So the set of all x such that x is greater than 5. So what this is, it's just a set, it's a collection of numbers of all the x's under the condition that x has to be greater than 5. That is the way that we can express our solution using what we call set builder notation. We're going to see set builder notation come to play again in chapter 7.